my grand dhamma father sehat ji was also a cultivator but he turned into a dhamma cultivator he started sowing seeds of dhamma siaji uba khin came here for seven times to meditate and you in those days meditation was done here sajib uh, ubakin will also come here other students will come here and sajib will sit there from there he will give me the give strength to the meditators although in the attire of a family man a lay person inside he lived the life of a monk so very much pure was his life that people will keep on getting inspiration by his life therefore we express our feeling of infinite gratitude towards satyaji this is the sacred land where satyaji uba can go to second bird coming out of the shell of ignorance under the guidance of satyaji in 1937 ubakin crossed the yangon river on the way to satyaji's village to take his first meditation course from there onwards there was no looking back My dhamma father said you what he used to say that the time clock of the person has struck now it must go to its country of origin india and from there it will spread no one can stop that progress Ubakin combined his profound dedication to dhamma with his devotion to government service throughout his life. He was one of the most distinguished civil servants of his time in Myanmar. On the day the country gained independence, he became the accountant general, and for the next two decades he also served in a variety of government posts, sometimes holding several of them simultaneously. His efficiency and integrity were unsurpassed. But serving his country on the mundane level was not enough. He was eager to share the jewel of vipassana and help people find the path to liberation. In 1952, he established the International Meditation Center in Yangon, where he started teaching vipassana meditation. As a teacher, Ubakin insisted on strict discipline, but at the same time, he showed immeasurable love and compassion. He was able to explain dhamma in a way that Buddhists and non-Buddhists alike could grasp and appreciate. His unique non-sectarian interpretation of dhamma and his ability to teach in English drew people from different countries and religious backgrounds. Sayaji Ubakin paved the way for dhamma to start spreading all over the world far beyond the borders of Myanmar. In 1955, SN Goenka, a successful businessman and the leader of the Indian community in Burma, took his first vipassana course with Sayaji Ubakin. It was a life-transforming experience. He continued to study for 14 years under the guidance of Sayaji. and became one of his foremost students. We remember this brilliant shining star in the galaxy of Dhamma, Sayaji Uba Khen, my Dhamma father. He had so much love and compassion for the entire suffering humanity, but special love and compassion for India, 
He kept on saying that I have to pay back the debt of gratitude. This wonderful, invaluable Dhamma came from India and today India is bankrupt. They don't have Dhamma. He very much wanted to go himself to give Dhamma, but due to certain reasons he could not go. And a situation arose due to which, even as a Burmese citizen, I got a passport to go to India. He was so happy, so pleased. Now you will go as my representative and you will fulfill my mission, my vision. I had my own hesitation because I knew my limitation. But he encouraged, saying that you have nothing to worry because Dhamma is going there. And through you, I am going there and you will be successful, you need not worry. It was all the power of Syaji Obakhin. It was all the blessing of Syaji Obakhin that within one month, the first course of 10 days was given in India. And then after that, the Ganges of Dhamma started flowing throughout the country, courses after courses, courses after courses, unbelievable. And hundreds of people, thousands of people from around the world, they started coming to India and they started taking these courses. Unbelievable. It made me feel all the more that I am just a representative of Sayadi. I am just a representative of Sayadi. Everything is done by Dhamma, everything is done by Sayadi Uba Khen. Therefore, on this day, when we are all assembled here to pay our homage to this great householder saint, Sayadi Uba Khen, our Dhamma Father, the only way to pay real respect to Sayadi Uba Khen is live the life of pure Dhamma, be a good example of somebody living the life of pure Dhamma and keep on serving people egolessly, egolessly, always thinking that I am the representative of Sayadi Uvakhin. May the Dhamma vision, may the Dhamma mission of that great teacher Sayadi Uvakhin get fulfilled. May more and more people around the world get benefited by this wonderful Dhamma May all come out of their suffering. May all be happy, be peaceful, be liberated, liberated.